security expert Mukta Dan Ian joins us now via Skype from Washington to talk about the threat posed by North Korea's missile test. Many thanks for joining us, Mukta. What do you make of it, really? Sure. Even Now, this is even coming as a NATO Secretary General Jun said on Sunday that North Korea's nuclear and missile program represented a global threat and requires a global response. What kind of response right. do you think that would be, apart from uh, the suggestion coming from uh, South Korea? Well, other than sanctions, there is unfortunately very little that can be done. Um, one of the reasons for that is that unlike other countries uh, which have uh, been rogue states, for example, Libya or Syria or Iran or where have you, a lot of what North Korea does, um, it does either underground or in caves, which means uh, foreign intelligence agencies don't have a very good of what is placed where. So a surgical strike is unfortunately uh, next to impossible. Furthermore, I mean, in, in North Korea, it's, uh, it's, it's literally a police state where people turn and, you know, report even their own family members to the government uh, for perceived um, insubordination or lack of patriotic fervor. So there is very little intel as to what's really going on and where. That's why, despite the fact that uh, Kim Jong-il was able to uh, promise a nuclear test at the beginning of this year and literally putting the whole world on notice, uh, Western intelligence, Western powers could not do anything to sabotage it as they did when Iran first started trying and, uh, you know, build up the nuclear reactor and so on and so forth. So really, again, other than sanctions, uh, there is very little the world can do except uh, a nation such as the U.S. decides to laterally go in and blow places up in North Korea. But again, because no one really knows where things are, uh, the fallout is, is probably going to be huge. All right. One is you expect that with all this, the talks of sanction, the, the, the U.S. coming together, the U.N. coming together, perhaps North Korea will budge. But just last week, it came up with another test, which was even 10 times stronger than what we had in 1945, talking right. about the Hiroshima bomb. What do, you think right. will make, what do you think will make North Korea cave in? I don't think anything can make North Korea cave in. Uh, the whole objective of North Korea's uh, government has been and is regime preservation. Um, Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong his main objective is to stay in power. Also, in the last few years, a lot of, um, with the proliferation of the internet and uh, DVDs and what have you in North Korea, even though it's all underground, a lot of younger people have started uh, having some doubt about the legitimacy of his rule and his real uh, role on the global stage. So part of what he's doing with all his nuclear tests and everything is to consolidate his hold on power to show that he indeed is what he proclaims to be, which is a player on the global stage, which in turn consolidates his position with his generals and his population and even the younger people. So uh, I don't think he's going to back down. I mean, North Korea has been a belligerent state for many years for dead kids, actually, and I don't think anything is going to change in that regard. All right, uh, let's go to the, to the actors, the world powers now, and their meetings. Oh. There seem to be some kind of disconnect. Russia last week was saying, I don't support military action, but perhaps the suggestion coming from right. South Korea say, okay, oil embargo, do you think Russia will buy into that? No, uh, in fact, the United Nations sanctions have already removed... Um, language about placing an oil and gas embargo against North Korea. Uh, language has also been removed about blacklisting uh, Kim Jong-un. So uh, Russia and China, for that matter, seem to have wielded some influence uh, to ensure that uh, the sanctions that shall be passed shall be very minimal, uh, all things considered. So no, Russia, in other words, Russia is not going to budge. Okay, but what do you think will make them have a roundtable, have a consensus, talking about the world powers now, on how to handle North Korea? I truly don't think anything, simply because uh, North Korea is in Russia's sphere of influence. North Korea is within Russia's strategic zone, and uh, South Korea obviously is in the U.S. Uh, central influence, uh, U.S. Uh, 
not as much as before, but it's still to many uh, to a considerable extent a satellite of the United of the United States. So I think uh, with uh, a lot of Cold War posturing coming back into the global way of doing things, I don't think Russia is ready to give up its uh, sphere of influence. Of course, China also has a lot of strategic interest in North Korea. So I don't think China is going to budge either. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on one's perspective, both Russia and China have um, veto power on the United Nations Security Council. So either one of them can pretty much say no to anything, and that thing falls apart. And they have both indicated that at this point in time, military action is not on the table. They've also indicated that uh, strong sanctions against North Korea are not on the table. All right, we'll leave it there. So uh, it's unlikely anything will make them change their mind. Okay, many thanks, uh, Mukta. Always a pleasure Thank having you, you on Absolutely. the news. Thank many thanks me. for coming.